All right guys, we're here in ZBrush and I'm gonna give you a quick little breakdown of the transpose tool. All right, so currently as we're sculpting, we are in what's called draw mode and you can tell that by the uh, draw button up here being highlighted. All right, that means we can sculpt on here just like we're used to, smooth sculpt, etc., etc. Um, if we want to switch into transpose mode, we can click the move, scale, or rate, uh, rotate button, right? And that will basically be a way of manipulating um, any unmasked points on your current subtool. Okay, so with one of these selected, I'm going to click and drag out what's called an action line. Okay, you can see I've got a few different uh, circles here and then a straight bar going through those circles. Each one of these circles is going to be a different handle. Okay, so they're going to have a slightly different effect on your object. So let's take a look at what happens if we're in move mode and we click the inner circle of the outermost handle. You can get some really interesting results here. Some sort of morphing Creature. All right, and then we can move the entire object with the middle one, and then we can cut off limbs with the inner one. Okay, if we switch to scale, we can do an overall scale. With the middle one, is going to do sort of a, a perpendicular scale, and then with the inner one, um, it's going to do similar to an overall scale. Okay, then with rotate, we can click and rotate this outermost handle, which is going to rotate upon the first handle as a pivot point. So you can see that it rotates around that shoulder. Okay, the middle one is going to uh, act as if the action line that you dragged out is the axis for your rotation. Okay, and then this one is going to rotate upon the opposite handle. All right, so um, another useful thing about, well, before we get into that, um, we can either click the inner circles to actually manipulate our geometry, or we can click the orange outer ring to adjust the action line itself, right? So if I wanted to rotate um, or move along this arm, one way to do that would be to click at the shoulder, drag out the action line all the way out to the side, and then click the orange, oops, it's kind of hard to grab there. Click the orange ring and drag it down towards the wrist, okay? Another way to do that is to simply click and drag along the object and you can see that it's going to snap to anywhere on the model okay which can be really useful there we go okay so speaking of dragging along the object uh, one really useful feature of Transpose is called masking by topology. So if I hold, while I'm in Transpose mode, if I hold, uh, click and hold the control key to enter mask mode, just like we would when we were sculpting, and then I click and drag along the surface of my object, you can see that the mask sort of crawls along uh, along the sculpture, right? That's because it's following the topology of this character, which is a super useful feature, say, if you want to um, start rotating just the arms and have quick access to the arms. We can click our, ma uh, our mask, click and drag our mask along the object. I'm going to move Oftentimes, I will just kind of randomly click somewhere else on the model to move the transpose tool out of the way and then go back and reposition it where I need it. 
Okay, now we can rotate just the arms. And now we're kind of posing our uh, character here. Okay, another useful way to use the rotation tool is by clicking and dragging the end point to uh, where you want to pivot your model. So for example, if I wanted to bend this arm at the elbow, I would click somewhere up here and drag the transpose line out to the elbow. And then while holding shift, uh, excuse me, while holding alt, I'm going to click and drag on that last handle. And you can see that it's going to rotate everything beyond that last handle. So everything downstream from the trans, uh, the action line. Again, I'm clicking, I'm pressing and holding Alt, and then clicking and dragging on the last handle. Okay, and it's going to move it. It's going to rotate it perpendicular to the camera. Let me do that. Okay, so you can see how easy it would be to start to pose a character using mask by topology and then um, these different forms of rotation. All right. Okay, now let's try and um, add another subtool to this or another piece of geometry so that we can push it around and, and get it into place. Let's say, for example, we wanted to add some sort of band or cuff around this character's wrist. Okay, I might take a brush like the insert cylinder brush, and then I'll click. Oh, we need to delete our layers first. So I'll, I'll click and drag a cylinder in the place that I think I'm going to want it. And now I'll switch into transpose mode. And with the W key, I'll go into move. And you can see that when we do an insert mesh, the transpose line is already, or the action line is already oriented um, on the object, which is really useful. Okay, so if I want to shorten this, I could try scaling it, but that's going to do some weird things based on a different pivot point. So what I might do is go into move mode and then click this outermost circle. And now if I'm not careful, I'm going to shear this geometry. But what happens if I press shift while I do this is that it's going to manipulate the um, object based on using the action line to constrain it. Okay. So one more time, rather than just clicking and dragging this outer ring, I'm going to click it and press shift and that's going to constrain the move to the action line. Okay, so I'll get it to about the proportions I think I need. And now I think I'm probably going to have to scale this down, so I will do some sort of um, scale. Let's see if we can get a better result on that. Yeah, scale is kind of a funny, kind of a funny one. So I'll just scale it down to about the size I need and then move it back into place. When I drag the action line out and hold shift, it's gonna snap it to an angle, which is what I usually like to do. Then I can push it along an axis, one axis at a time, and get it into place really quickly. Push it down, and now I need to rotate it. Okay, so I'll rotate it this way. Switch to a top view. Rotate it this way. Push it back into place, something like that, and then maybe we'll want to rotate it forward just a little bit. Oops. Nope. Okay. Now, if I turn on, you can see that using those insert multi mesh brushes is going to make this. Uh, make the mesh a part of my existing subtool, right? So that they both get sculpted at the same time. 
Now if I want to um, adjust the position of this new mesh after I've created it, one thing that's going to help is polygroups. Okay, so you can see that it's a different color, which means it's going to be a different polygroup. And one great feature about the transpose tool is that you can quickly mask based on polygroups. Okay, so with any one of the transpose tools selected, if I control click on a polygroup, you can see it masks everything but that polygroup. So now I have quick access to my cuffs if I want to push them up the arm a little bit, move it around. It's super easy. Okay, so if I wanted to, for example, pose this hand, okay, we can see that the fingers are all different polygroups too. So if I, oops, if I control click on a finger, I get quick access to that finger. I'm going to turn off polyframe. And then I can drag out my action line and rotate just one finger at a time. I'm going to clear my mask and click and drag on that again. Maybe I'll drag the action line out to the middle knuckle and then press Alt to rotate that finger down. Clear my mask. Try that again. Same thing. Rotate from the knuckle. Okay, something like that. You'll notice that this didn't happen symmetrically because these polygroups are not symmetrical. Okay, so if I wanted to do that, I would have to group each finger in the same polygroup and then um, use my tools. Another useful feature of the transpose tool is to curve a form around. So for example, let's say I wanted to add some sort of horns or something to this character. I might start by clicking and dragging out a cylinder like that. Okay, I'll position these. Rotate into place. Now what if I wanted some sort of uh, curvature to these? And maybe they should be a little bit longer. Drag those out. Get us some of the bulk. Okay, if I wanted to curve these, I could try something like the snake hook brush. But you see how we're getting that S curve at the end? If I want to actually curve these down and around, it's going to be very hard to do that with our sculpting brushes because of the area of influence. And we've got sort of a fall off. So we'd have to go in there and do something like that. And then if we really wanted to curve these around, we'd just have to continue to tug and tug and tug at this geometry. And then it starts to get kind of stretched out and, and wonky. So a quick way of doing this is using that Alt uh, rotation modifier. So I'll move my action line out of the way, click and drag, and then again, uh, holding Alt and clicking on the outermost ring will allow me to bend that really easily. Okay, then I'm just gonna reposition the outside handle, bend that again, and go up position this one too. And now we just want to get rid of those facets so I'll just go back in and smooth that back a little bit. Okay now I've got some nice candy canes on his head. And that about covers it for the transpose tool. Uh, super useful tool. 
and lots of different things you can do with it. So have fun.